Hi Nicholas, how are you doing? How are you? Very so uh, good. you've got exciting new launch here, the Mobile World Congress. Yes, so uh, so we're at Planet Computers. Uh, we're at Mobile World Congress, Hall 7, Stand 15. Uh, so uh, as you know, we usually make uh, smartphones with with keyboards. So this is the Astro Slide. It's the only 5G phone with a. Uh, we think it's a very nice phone. It's very easy to type and to. How stable is the functionality? Oh, it's very mechanism. stable. Yeah, we, it's you know it's it's solid. You know it's very solid. I place it on the surface. It's very solid. It's very easy to type. So um, very very easy to type. So. Uh, and then when you want to fold it, fold it, and it goes into a, just like a normal mobile phone. And then you can put it in your pocket. So if you need to write longer things, longer emails, edit spreadsheets, or write Word documents, do a lot of email, uh, anything which requires a lot of typing, this is a great device. You don't need to carry a laptop around. Nice. And, uh, and what's happening over there? So we're launching um, a Linux PC. This is a fully productized Linux computer. It's called the Planet PC XR series. We have two models, the XR1 and XR2. What are the key features? One in is really zero configuration. So you take it out of the box, you plug it in, plug it into the internet, it works. Okay, so you can really easily um, use Second thing is we have this unique unique touch screen in front, so you can do different functions. Uh, you know, do media controls, take screenshots, start browsers, start shells, do copy and paste. So a nice control here. Where you can just create some kind of action. So okay, we can you know you have something on your screen, you want to take a screenshot, you just take a screenshot. You know, it's very very simple like that. But also. There's some nice functions. You can have a hotspot, so the network functions are really nice. You can create a VPN link, so you can easily just select and go to a particular country. Uh, here we're going to go and select the VPN, go to Japan. So all our network is now in Japan. Um, we can have network disks, so you can use this as your storage appliance for the home. You can use it for your storage appliance uh, for the office. So you control your VPN on a little screen while you do your computing externally? Yes, yes, you can control. And if you have your network attached to here, all the other machines also end up being on the VPN. So it's a kind of VPN gateway at the same time. Uh, so really, it's kind of productizing Linux, so it's easy to configure, easy to use. Um, as well as, here's, a, for example, the PC monitors. You can see, actually, what's happening on my computer. So here you can see, OK, this is how much CPU is being taken. This is how much memory is being taken. This is my network processing at the moment. So very, very easy to just uh, have a look at those features, right? And here's disabling the hotspot as well. So this is kind of some of the... How these uh, functionalities being developed? Is it limited to what you add to it, or is there any uh, chance people can do stuff? So there's a, there's a systems menu, which is kind of controlled by Planet. But there's the soft keys, which we plan to open up so you can have more soft keys and, and even application screens that are only dedicated to your own application. Plus, you can switch up this whole application and just write your own interface if you want, because this is just a normal screen. Like, so the XR2 can support up to the XR2 can support up to four displays. So you can have this display a one 8K HDMI display and two more 4K HDMI displays. Oh, uh, sorry, one more 4K HDMI display and one uh, USB-C display out as well, uh, which is also 4K. So you can actually have three big screens and a little touch screen here. So quite a, quite a nice thing. As well as that, there's HDMI in, so you can actually ingest video at 4K as well. So for, for people that are doing video, uh, it's quite an interesting box as well because it has HDMI in. All right. Uh, can we look at the, the, the connection connections on the back? Uh, I can show you some of the uh, connections. This is the actual. This is the XR1. So you can see this box. So this is the smaller box. 
So that this has two uh, USB, uh, so, so four USBs here. There will be two more on the side. Uh, two Ethernet ports, one HDMI. So this is the XR1, but then there's the XR2, um, which is uh, which has got HDMI in and two HDMI out and a USB-C, which I can show you a bit later. But actually, maybe we can show you just on the screen um, what that looks like. We go to the Indiegogo campaign. Let me see. Hold on. So maybe we can show you here. Uh, the So there, there's also front LEDs, 16 LEDs. So you can see that on the on the device in the front. But if you look at the back, so this is the this is the um, situation here. So you have, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can. I'm gonna go into another shot, so no, we won't go there. Let's go back here, and uh, maybe I can show the picture. So here, here might be a good picture of the back. When it comes, the internet's a bit slow because of the whole, uh, you know. You can use my 5G. You're doing, you're doing better than we are, I think, on the... I'm not sure, I hope so. I need to check if the, the quality of the stream is good. But so, people can go on uh, planetcom.co.uk? Yes, and uh, planetco.co.uk, and if you want to back it, this is the URL for backing where we launched the Indiegogo campaign. So, so it's nice. igme.gogopc, igme at... What's the price? So the prices are from about... I have to convert from pounds, but roughly sort of around 450 euros for the smaller unit. And then for the highest unit, with let's say 32 gigs of RAM, uh, it can be over a thousand euros, but it's a very big box. Now. What's the performance of this ARM CPU? It's a nice performance on? because it has it's 8 core. So, you know, you have a nice performance on the, on the 3, CPU. 3568 rock chip? Yeah. So 3588 and 3568. So you have different uh, performances. This is the smaller one. You can see here. On the uh, if I go here and I can go to the uh, PC monitor, this is a smaller box. So you can see the processor. This is a four core. Uh, so this is the low, the value end, the lower end of the products. So you can have CPU. And here you can see uh, that's a two gigahertz. You can have four cores. And uh, you can see the number of threads and processes running on the on the device, right? Nice. That's awesome. Um, so uh, it looks like you could you could position your display on top. Is it for you, that? You it's can like a do. Table. You can do. Yes. Uh, there's a certain amount of weight. Wouldn't you could put the display on top uh, as well, so you can optimize your table space as well, uh, presuming that the display is not too heavy. Ideally, we, we've kind of really looked at this side more as a expansion for this storage. So if you use it as a home network disk, then you can actually expand your storage for personal data. So that was kind of one of the things. Uh, and we're planning to do an expansion module for storage. Like there could be a bunch of hard drives or SSDs yes. and stuff? Yes, exactly. It could be an array? And that, it kind of creates a nice shape when you, when you build it up. All right. Nice. Uh, so, um, so this is targeted for the whole world. Yes, we're looking at sort of the, this is you know as we're getting fiber optics, we're getting 5G connectivity to the home and to the office. Then the upload speeds are are getting faster and faster. So with those upload speeds, right? Uh, what we're looking at is then you can have small Linux devices, small servers, more network appliances, more distributed computing coming directly into the home. And these kind of boxes will enable you to do that. All right. Cool. And uh... so how did, how did it go so far with the launch? Uh, we just launched, so still the very, very early days. But, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think the press interest is quite high. I think we have quite a few articles already coming out. So uh, let's see how it goes, but uh, early days. All right, cool. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, what about delivery dates? What about 
when people uh, back it right now? Uh, delivery uh, is planned for September because we already have some pre-production uh, plastics and, and metal and PCBs. Then uh, we think there's a low risk of it going wrong. I think on the um, we'll have some units for the very early backers. We have a kind of perk which is a, a early ship which would ship in, in July. So that is uh, that is for for only a limited number of units. But it's uh, we've already we already commissioned the plastics and the metal. So. It's uh, in a PCB, so we're There's still we're a little bit of uh, supply issues, but the world is back to normal, kind of, or? It's a lot better. I mean, we still have some uh, pre-ordered chips for the Astro devices, which we're going to China to see, to get the next production run going. So this is the, the Astro, as you know. Uh, and uh, that's also ARM-based, so um, we are, um, which is our flagship 5G phone. Uh, what does uh, MediaTek say about this? I think uh, they, they, they like unique devices. I'm sure that they sometimes would probably, uh, you know, can't speak on their behalf, but I would say, you know, if you look at the volumes for something like Alexa, which has the uh, MediaTek chips, we are much smaller volume for them, so we are a more niche player. But uh, we, are, we, are, we have been uh, MediaTek, uh, uh, we've been using MediaTek on all of our phones so far, and it's been, uh, 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 you know, if you look at the different experiences you can have in the industry, it's been a good experience. So. Has there been some uh, some uh, open source access to the GPU acceleration in some ways? So I ha I, I I don't know about that. Uh, maybe it's interesting for your viewers. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I don't know about open source as well. I think maybe some things are more controlled than others. Uh, but it's something that we haven't really queried, so hasn't come into play with, with us at least at the moment. I think when it comes to putting uh, Linux onto the Astro, um, there's, that's probably one of the challenges, it will be, if we can get a very fast uh, graphics processing. The second will be, which is more a common, a more common issue, for everybody is how to get uh, open the 5G reel. So the radio interface layer working in Linux with 5G, getting that really well to work. Because a lot of the Linux devices at the moment are um, are operating on 4G maximum. You know, so if you take a UB ports phone uh, operating on 4G, like we have the, let's say on the Cosmo or on the Gemini, uh, we have different Linux. the Linux drivers to be there. Where is they there on Android, right? All right. Um, and uh, how about the, this Linux? Can you tell a little bit more about the version of Linux and what kind of uh, So we're starting uh, at the moment, there? we're starting with, uh, it's, it's Ubuntu 2004. So that's an LTS version, long-term support. Uh, obviously, it's uh, uh, so, it go processor on the uh, on the XR2, and uh, we've added some applications, of course, like the like the front end uh, here, and obviously a little bit of customization on the bigger screens as well. And um, I think you know that will probably shift to 2204 very soon. So we might even launch with 2204, but at the moment uh, it's 2004. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so it's it's pretty much uh, we d we don't want to overload it with software, but we have the app that controls the the the, the, the in integrated display of the XR. So um, we we want to keep it. We have the Vivaldi browser. Uh, we've been working with Vivaldi to put Vivaldi on our phone, so there is a Vivaldi browser on there, um, and uh, that makes it maybe also a. More, more open than some other browsers that are out there. Uh, performance, uh, hardware accelerated. Yes, yes, nice performance. Very good. Nice. It's lag free, you know, the 8 core uh, 358 8 chip is 
very lag free, so it's a nice it's a nice experience. The upstream yeah. everything. And we run things like we run things like Visual Studio Code on there, you know, on R. It's a very good experience. So it's got a performant, powerful GPU that has full acceleration on the Linux. Well, you know, there's there's Mali T610 and there's support for there's support for uh, for for Ubuntu. All right, cool, awesome. All right, thanks a lot. See you see you, uh, see you later. Thank you, Nick. See you trip. later. Yes, okay. absolutely, cool. absolutely. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cool. All right, thanks. Uh, so let's. Um, I hope uh, people, everybody can see. Uh, can you watch this? Is it smooth? How's the quality? Um, I don't know if I, I see some drop frames a little bit, and I'm wondering um, if I should lower the bitrate because I'm going through a 5G uh, modem that's in my backpack. I will try to see if I can re-optimize this for a second. I'll just do a break for like three minutes just to have a view, have a look if everything looks okay on the YouTube channel. Stay, stay around. All right. Uh, so, please in the chat. Uh, I was unsure if the, the sound was good, if the video quality was good, how many drop frames there are. Is it skip in the video, or does it seem to be smooth? That'd be great if you can write in the in the comments. Um, and I'll just be walking around here, and we'll be doing some more videos. Here, uh, let's uh, follow me. These guys. Yeah. Okay, so this is our, are you, are you available? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so, uh, this for a YouTube channel, if you can uh, just do a chat, and we're going to do a demo, so I'll grab, um, we might have to do a, is it there? We have multiple have demos. So, maybe the cube would be a good one. Um, okay. So, I'll get Mustafa, yeah. Sorry, just one second, I'll grab her. All right, maybe come on this side. All right. Cool. Okay. So let's go. Let's go ahead right here. So hi. Hello. So please introduce yourself. Oh, so I'm Alistair Bannum. I'm the CEO of Pure Life Fund. It's great to be here at Mobile World Congress, where we're um, we're demonstrating our great innovative technology that transfers data via light. So what we have today on our stand is we have a series of demos that use our newly launched light antenna device. So this light antenna device um, is fully qualified. It's ready for integration into connected devices. And this was launched formally today and we have the press release that we're more than happy to share with people. So this device will go into uh, smartphones, into uh, tablets, into very small form factor devices. The beauty of this is that it connects to existing 802.11 baseband's which are already inside all of these connected devices. So whether it's your phone, whether it be your IoT devices, whether it be your um, um, tablet, it will have an 802.11. This device will connect directly to this. So what else we have today is we have a series of demonstrations that build upon this light antenna and we have, and you'll see this over here, we have the Li-Fi cube. So if you come over here, and you're broadcasting at your whole booth, you have like emitters up in the roof or how does it so, work? So uh, we have, um, we have uh, just above we have an access point here which works with the head mounted display uh, demonstration that we have here which is a uh, accessory to the a HoloLens, and we can talk more about that in a minute. We have the Li-Fi cube, 
which is a standalone device, which is the first of its kind in the world. So you don't need to plug it into the ceiling. You can put it on a shelf, you can put it on a table. It's very flexible, it's secure. And what we know is many CIOs have worries about people working at home connecting to their network in the office because many people do it from the kitchen or their dining room table and they're using the Wi-Fi which we know cannot be secure. So this device enables transmission from the queue to a, a, a high-speed client and you work within that, uh, that uh, cone and you're safe, se secure, no one knows you're transmitting, you cannot be detected and so on. It's invisible light. It's invisible light. So this is on now and we'll, do, we'll show you a demo in a minute of it working. But it's very flexible, you can put it in your bag. Imagine you're a, an embassy person, you want to go to certain countries in the world where you want to have secure, covert conversations. Well, use the life IQ, put it in your bag, plug the high-speed client into your PC and you have a secure, undetected um, communications. Imagine in your in your children's bedroom where they want to play games and mum and dad downstairs are downloading Netflix and their latency goes and they get you know a problem with the game. Have the life IQ sitting on the desk, they're, they're transmitting, playing the game within the life I cone, no interference, no problems with latency and you can then you know do all these things that that you need to do, yeah? Uh, so if I can um, ask you over here uh, what's your background with the Li-Fi? My personal background? Yeah. So I joined uh, Pure Li-Fi in 2016 as CEO. So we've just gone through a Series A investment. And part of that investment was to getting some experience with a new chairman and a new CEO that had, you know, had uh, worked in larger companies in different uh, world. And I'd, I'd lived in the US, I'd spent a lot of time in Japan, I'd spent a lot of time in Singapore, a lot of time in Europe. Uh, so I joined in 16. It was very interesting actually, because when I, when I started, the more I thought about it, the more excited I became. Why? Because I see it had legs, because of security, the bandwidth, it overcomes a whole raft of challenges, multi-user degradation, unregulated spectrum, I mean, you can use it anywhere in the world and you don't have to ask the local uh, government to free up spectrum for you. So imagine moving from one country to another wanting to communicate, you use this solution. So I joined and I've been working with the team now to really generate and drive our strategy towards developing this first light antenna device, which will become pervasive in all of these connected devices as we go through time. So Li-Fi is... Uh industry standard? Li-Fi is a uh, industry standard so back in 2017 we set up the topic interest group and in 2018 uh, under the IEEE it was given the number 802.11bb so it's the first light communication standard that will when ratified early this year because we've gone through all of the uh, all of the uh, uh, the different levels of ratification it will be certified this year. It will enable full interoperability yeah. with RF. So Wi-Fi to Li-Fi handover, RF to Li-Fi handover. It becomes automatic as you do with your LTE to, to Wi-Fi when you, when you go in and out of the home. So you have all of this uh, great technology with, um, with light. And what it means is that this device here can be placed inside connected devices because it's standard, it'll be standards compliant, so many people can build equipment that will interoperate with each other. When you talk about the 802.11 BB, that sounds like, uh, uh, so there's also 802.11 in the market that's yeah. uh, that's Wi-Fi? Yeah, like exactly. Numbers? So 802.11 is the most pervasive protocol on the planet. All connected devices have 802.11 basebands in them. So we chose to make sure that all of our products are 802.11 compliant by working with them and the IEEE to have a fully interoperable light antenna device that works in that 802.11. So it works alongside Wi-Fi, Wi-Gig, Bluetooth, LTE, 5G, doesn't matter. So you can have Li-Fi to Wi-Fi handovers, right? So you can have a device that has both Li-Fi in and Wi-Fi 
you put it you put your phone in the pocket it converts to Wi-Fi you bring your phone out it comes back onto Li-Fi so full interoperability uh, what does the 802.11 actually do the, that when people say that so what it is it's the protocol that's used so all companies that build 802.11 solutions meet and conform to that 802.11 standard so it means if I'm from company A and you're from company Z and you're building 802.11 devices, we can connect and talk to each other. So it gives you full interoperability. So it's a global standard for all connected devices. There's around something like four and a half billion connected uh, 802.11 devices out there that our technology will connect to. And this little chip, which, which part of it? Is that the both sides of it that you're so, showing here? Yeah, so what you've got, this is the front side, this is the um, detector and the um, transmitter. And this is just the backside PCB. So what this will do is it will fit inside the end of your phone or in your connected device. And instead of transmitting via RF, you're transmitting via light. And you need to connect that on a PCB? So this will connect oh, you to you. need to be in the front of the device. Yeah, so you put it on the edge of the device and you have a, like an infrared cover on it so you won't even see it. And then you connect it as a, a little, um, on the PCB there, you put a, a little flex wire that go to your PCB and then it connects to your existing 802.11 baseband device in the phone, whether it be AC, AX and obviously in the future uh, BE. Are there uh, phones other than just a few prototypes? So there's not, there's, in there's, the not, there's not a phone that's out there in production, but we're obviously working and part of our goal is to get this into you know, high volume connected devices. And the point of launching this fully qualified device today is to enable our customers to evaluate it and know that this is the device that will end up in the phone once it's been qualified. And uh, how many companies are working on the Li-Fi ecosystem? Uh, so I know of probably five or six, maybe seven or eight. I mean, there's a lot going on even within the semiconductor world where people are looking at photonics as a way of transmitting and receiving data. But we're the global leaders. You know, we are ahead of the game, as uh, our customers tell us. We're very proud to be there and we want to stay there. Um, but this will become a pervasive technology that will touch everyone as we go through the next 10 years. Is a company like OLEDCOM a competitor or a partner? Or? Well, OLEDCOM is a, is a company that builds uh, a Li-Fi for their specific market. So, you know, the, the point is the market is so small at the moment, but the opportunity is so big. The more competition in there, more people producing Li-Fi products is good for the whole ecosystem. So there's so much to play for. They, they support schools and high data rate products for different applications. We have to be focused on the consumer and the military and defense and industrial. Yeah, and um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the, so the main thing you're trying to solve is uh, stable bandwidth reliable bandwidth even when there's a lot of people in the room or yeah, so, a lot of things happening you still get the good signal yeah so you know as as the more and more connected devices are in our homes I don't know how many you have in your home but you know some people have 20 to 30 devices you have all the family have connected PCs connected tablets connected phones connected IOT devices connected whatever so the more people that go on to this uh, Wi-Fi um, bubble, let's say, the more congested it gets. And the one who, who commands the largest data or bandwidth actually impacts everyone else there. Classic example, you go to, a, you go to the airport and you want to get onto the Wi-Fi, you can't get on there because hey, there's thousands of people trying to get on there. And even when you do get on there, someone then sucks a massive you know, bandwidth uh, um, product and you get kicked off. So what happens is using Li-Fi alongside Wi-Fi, and we're additive and complementary, we're not here to replace it, you can actually have a better experience with your RF because you, you off-boarding stuff onto the Li-Fi which is, will take higher data rates and higher bandwidth and the people who are using Wi-Fi will have a better experience. If you cover the, the, the sensor, receiver sender, uh, with your hand or if you turn your phone around or as soon as you disconnect with Li-Fi it should automatically instantly be on the Wi-Fi continuing yeah, the so connection. The, so the whole standardization 802.11 BB gives you that so when well, one is blocked so people say people say I've got um, 
I've got Li-Fi on my phone. When I put it in my pocket, it's not going to work. Well, no, light doesn't go through your pocket, does it? But it'll automatically switch over to RF. It's the same as when you're outside with LTE. Or so as XR, VR, you know, AR, mixed reality, doesn't matter what you want to call it, becomes more of a reality in this world, then Li-Fi is a solution to help drive and support those uh, applications. All right, what's the price of your technology? Is it uh, uh, no-brainer to add it to every smartphone? So, you know, we work with high-volume partners that enable us to be cost-effective. So part of the, um, the process on pricing is you've got to be market-ready, market pricing. So we know in volume this supports, so we know in volume this supports being designed into uh, to high-volume products. Cool. All right, thanks a lot. Is that good? Oh. Uh, so maybe there'll be Li-Fi everywhere in the future. Oh, Li-Fi is going to be basic and touch everyone on this planet over time. And you just need to connect something on the light bulb, right? Maybe a... You don't need a light bulb. You can have, um, you can have an access point which is infrared. I mean, that's uh, an infrared access point. There's no light on there. You could put light around it so you can switch it on and off just for light, illumination, but you don't need that for transmitting and receiving data. But would it, wouldn't it be nice to put it on every light bulb? Well, you could, yeah, that's one option. You could put it into every light bulb and have it transmitting. But when you turn that light off, what happens? You don't transmit in the dark. So it's probably better to have a infrared solution with the visible light around it. You then turn the light off, like on a plane. You know, when you're doing work on a plane, you want sometimes to watch things. You don't want the visible light. So it can sit alongside a traditional light, for sure. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. So, um, and uh, here, what are you showing here? So, what we have challenges is one of them is to get through challenges is one of them is to get through into the house. So, what we're doing is we have here a uh, what we call a, a Lynx 5G bridge, Li-Fi bridge that transmits data from the outside you can possibly have. So, we have very high-speed data rates trans emitting through light rate through light all right uh, thanks guys for watching uh, it'd be cool if you can uh, post in the chat how's the quality that's my big question is it stable uh, do you see some weird drop frames do you see like bad do you hear bad sound was everything perfect? Be cool if you can write me a little uh, message about that, because it's hard for me to check while I'm here, live streaming at the Mobile World Congress. Let's check our here if we can reconnect all right uh, let's see if we can do a video here just uh, keep filming me let's walk around the Hey, can I do a video with you? Yes, for sure. If you want. All right. Let's meet. Can you like cats? Nice. 
So please introduce yourself. Yes, I'm Vasco Petruzzi. I'm CEO of Cybertech Services. We are leading uh, the project Computarte. We produce uh, ornamental home server in ceramic for private artificial intelligence. Uh, to give you a shortcut, it's like an Alexa, but doesn't spy on you, because all data are stored uh, in the house for privacy reason. The cat will never talk on you. It no. will never give you information to the CIA or anything. The, the, the cat will talk only to you, will never talk to any third party. So all the pipeline for voice recognition, it's uh, running on the, on the server. So you can give voice commands for home automation, for example, or you can uh, manage and control your biometer parameters for EF or added value services uh, through which we would like this to be your uh, personal digital uh, kitty bank and only when and if you want, you'll be able to offer your data on the market because privacy is only one face of the coin. The other one is data monetization. So does it only speak in meow meow or does it speak in uh, any language you want? A any language, any language. You can control it with all the language you want. But what is the AI you use? It's uh, the full pipeline to, for uh, uh, speech to text, uh, intent extraction and uh, text to speech. So all the pipeline to have the voice recognition of premise. And the whole pipeline, what, you, are you making a competitor to the Googles, the, the Amazon, or at, where, who's doing all the, like, all the AI stuff? We are, like, we are exploiting uh, open, uh, open source platforms, fully working uh, for uh, AI. Uh, in the ancient Egypt, the goddess, what are you talking about in there? Do everybody loves the cats? Uh, actually, the, the, the inspiration uh, from this ornamental model coming from uh, the Egyptian goddess, she used to protect home, children, family, and uh, it's a good omen for, for the house. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, do, you know, do you have some friends here? What's the coolest stuff at the, at the booth? You know that there are many. Uh, you, you, should, you should explore because there are... Uh, we walk around. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Let me give you my card. Okay. Uh, let's take one of your cards. Yes. The video will go right here. It's live on okay. YouTube, but uh, we'll post it separately also. Okay. If you want, you send me a yes. little message. Yes. What is the description we should use for your video? Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank right. you. Bye bye. Okay. Let's try over here. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Hi. Can I do a video with you? Sure enough. You talk about this. I'm talking about this. Yes. Yeah. Hi. So please introduce yourself. Yes, we are a company from Italy called Technogest. Uh, we are digital life simplifiers. Uh, this is how we like to call ourselves. We start from the uh, edge part of the IoT infrastructure uh, to simplify the life of system integrators. So when it comes to uh, bringing to integrate different protocols, we are an engineering company that uh, engineers its own solution, both hardware and software. What we are presenting here at uh, the Bioworld Congress this year is uh, our what we what we like to call it the digital twin, which is basically a 3D representation of an object, which then can interact with the uh, physical counterpart in a very intuitive way. Uh, by the way, this box is connected by a voice over IP to our uh, head office in uh, Pescara in Italy, uh, and so we are able to uh, to call for supports uh, in our offices as well uh, with with our devices. So it's an integrated solution uh, where we bring in not just the connectivity part, unified communication part, but as well, uh, especially energy monitoring, which is a huge topic right now in Europe. Um, and uh, you see all the energy monitoring part over here. Uh, so this is basically the way we are we, we, we present ourselves at this kind of... Uh, what do you say? Techno? Techno jest. Jest. Yeah. Jest with J. Ha ah, with jest. J. Yeah. J. Yeah, that is... Uh, we are, a, we are an innovative uh, small medium enterprise, that's how it's called in Italy, um, but we actually have uh, 20 years of experience in this field. We are a B2B2B, B2B, so we work with uh, telecommunication operators, telcos, which are our yeah, biggest customers, that's why we are here as well. You have well, a lot of big customers? Them. Those are, those are yeah, we, we do a lot of projects and we are vendors uh, uh, for telecommunication companies, so big telcos. 
like uh, Team Wind, these are the sort of customers we have in Italy. And we are looking for expanding this uh, uh, business line as well in the uh, South American market, which is very well represented here, but as well the uh, Spanish one, why not? Cool, all right. Thanks a lot. You're a Thanks, press let me give you from... my card right here. Yeah. So it was live streaming on YouTube. Oh, nice. I'll post a separate video. All right. If you want, you send me a description with a text. Do what you, you want, want on your my video? business card for it yeah. or uh, yes? Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. Amazing. Thank you. Enjoy the fair. Thanks, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. All right. Let's go to uh, home. And the I cannot hear you. <laughs> right. I think five should be this way. What did it say here? Oh, so sorry. Estonia. So, guys in the live chat. Like guys in the live chat. So, how is the quality? Because I'm basically running around the, the balls right now. I see there's some drop frames. How bad is it? Because I'm at the Mobile World Congress trying to run a 5G in my pocket. area video quality in your browser is so so what do you mean by that is it uh, dropping frames is it not a smooth 1080p stream find these guys right here. Ah, oh, 61. Where are these guys? Hi, how do you do? Hey. Do you want to you? change the world? Yeah. Yeah, you want to change the world? Yeah. Um, uh, well, what's your name, first of all? <laughs> okay, let me just put guys on the break for a second. And we're back right here. And so please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Daphne. I'm from Blacknut. Blacknut is a cloud gaming platform uh, providing 500 games and under subscription mode. Uh, you can play any game from the cloud with streaming technology on any connected device. That means you can play on a PC, on a mobile, on a TV. Uh, and we work a lot also with uh, operators and other B2B distributors around the world. Blacknut is now available in 45 countries. So cloud? Yeah, it's cloud gaming. That means it's like uh, Netflix or Spotify for games. 
you have the game executed on the cloud and streamed to your device only through the internet, and so anyone can play with a gamepad and the platform. How do you compare with, uh, let's say, uh, whatever NVIDIA is doing, and uh, Stadia, and uh, Microsoft stuff, and okay. the, the French uh, Shadow? Okay, so if we start with the French, because you are inside the French tech here. Shadow is pretty cool, huh? Yeah, Shadow is pretty cool. They are doing um, a PC in the cloud. I mean, you rent a whole PC and you install whatever you want on it. We are a platform where all the games are included inside the subscription. You don't have to buy them, install them, manage them. It's all already pre-installed in the system. And if you compare with the other one you are uh, talking about, for example, GeForce Now, you have to play with your own license. So you have to buy games, and then you can use the technology of GeForce Now to stream game. In Black Nerd, it's all in one. Okay, you just subscribe, you install the app, and then you accept oh, the whole catalog is included. If I subscribe to Netflix, I don't want to pay for every movie. I want all the movies to be there, right? Exactly. It's a all you can eat mode. Also, we are more targeting the the whole family, so providing game for everyone in the family. And you can create an account for each. That means with one subscription you have five players and each player can choose their games inside the catalog. So you have the player for dad and mom, but also the kids with parental control to uh, provide a, a specific catalog for the kids. Nice. Uh, how many games are there? Uh, we guarantee more than 500 games. Uh, we actually have yeah. all sorts of games, yeah. I can show you a little bit of the platform if you want. So you can uh, go to Black Nerd directly from home. You will have... Let me go there. Oh, I think there's a slash. Yeah. There you go. And it's just a web app? No, we have the web app, we have the Android app. The web app is cool because you can also play, for example, here on my iPhone. I can go directly to BlackNet and I can just click and have the whole catalog here. And it's just web-based or uh, is it app-based? We have both. Yeah, both. We, we can provide that. We also are pre-installing LG TVs. We are going to be uh, inside the gaming hub of Samsung uh, next April. And we also install ourselves in the uh, setup box, uh, the TV box, yeah, for with telcos and other providers, content providers. And the Wi-Fi is terrible, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't work. Yeah, it's a mobile conference, but it's hard to do mobile technology. Yeah, uh, exactly. When there's so many yeah. people around. I'm it's working to better with my 5G oh, here, I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to connect with 5G. Uh, hopefully, there's no drop frames and stuff like that. How how famous are you? Like how many famous. people are using your, it says Red Herring Winner 100, so, they, do you have a lot of users? Yeah, we do and we provide, you know, the platform for, now I said 45 countries, it's covering all Europe, North America, uh, South Asia, but we also work a lot with our B2B partners and, and telecoms and they each, you know, have their uh, user base because they can sell BlackNet as an add-on. But we can also do a white label, you know, for them and, and create their own brand. So we have, for example, uh, M1 in Singapore having their own brand. Drei uh, Telecom, which is in Austria, they have their own brand. And so we manage those services with them, yeah? So I cannot give you the numbers because they are yeah. private, but uh, all those partners there sell uh, subscription to Blacknet. <laughs> how, how, how long time have you been doing this? When did you launch the service? Uh, Blacknet launched in beta in uh, 2018. And we deployed for the last two years. We're like opening a new partner, a new distribution channel every month, I think. A new partner. Uh, those last days, it's very busy. <laughs> Can you run uh, very high demanding games? Yeah, the, the game, the, the, 
The potential of the game is no difference because what you get from the end user is only a video streaming feed, yeah? What is the most important would be the latency of your network, that is really stable, then you have a good quality, yeah. But yeah, the, the we have like, for example, Metro Exodus or WFC, uh, they are great games, they are really PC console games. They are run in the cloud and just stream to your device, so it doesn't change uh, the, the power of the game doesn't change. Right now. Can I go in a desert on my smart van and connect with Starlink? Is it going to be okay? I hope. <laughs> I hope it will be. Yeah, that's. I would love to do that. Yeah. Because uh, I don't have latency to use is a question, right? Yeah. The latency. Exactly. Fifty is enough or milliseconds? Yeah, more it has to be the smallest possible. Yeah, uh, the most stable. And also, mm, the if you are in a normal condition at your home, it would be great. But yes, on the move, you can have you know. Uh, some small uh, short, shortage of network that you don't see on the video buffering, but you will maybe experience on cloud gaming. So there are still, you know, things we can do better. But 5G, for example, is a very good network to work with. Uh, the the shadow people like it because it it feels like they have a 2,000 euro computer with yeah. a huge GPU and a huge uh, CPU. Are you doing the same performance? I'm not targeting the same audience. I'm more, you know, wanting to provide good content to the whole family. They don't care about hardware. They want to use the hardware they have. They don't really ask those questions uh, because they are just, you know, wanting to enjoy the content. That's the first thing. And when you want to provide a very general public service like that, you need to have the quality that is serving the larger audience and the device they have and the connectivity they have, yeah? So we are not, you know, competing about the hardware. We are completely hardware agnostic for that. Um, but we are providing a very uh, strong cloud gaming infrastructure, you know, to make sure everyone can connect and have no waiting times. You know, they can click and really the, the game needs to launch very quickly. That is our goal, not, you know, looking for the higher performance of the, uh, I would say, um, not feeling, that we're not competing with the hardcore gamers, I would say. I, we're really wanting people, you know, to enjoy the content quickly, uh, everywhere, on any device, when they want to, yeah? But in theory, you could support AAA <laughs> latest games yeah, with the of highest. Course. And, and, and we've done and it. And Even 4K? Yeah, we can go up to that. But when you want to to make sure the people, on the other hand, you know, can receive it, uh, we need to make sure, you know, the quality we send is what they can get, you know, because it will be deceiving. If you promise too much and then people cannot, you know, use the connectivity they have, uh, they will not enjoy so much the 4K if it doesn't pass in the network, yeah? So our promise is more, you know, quick quick access, lots of games, all you can eat, content. This is really what we aim for. Do you also have a certain amount of hour limit? Like you no, can buy a that for B2B distribution partners, looking at how people consume, you know, uh, usually in their area. But the basic offering, when you go to Blackbird here in Europe, it will be a monthly basis, yeah, and all, all in, it will be a monthly basis, yeah, and all, all included. What kind of price? It's fourteen ninety nine per month. Fourteen ninety nine. Yeah. It's very affordable. That's yeah, I think if you need to buy all the games you get, yes, it's affordable. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think every game should be included. What can you do? Can you call somebody at the EU and say, <laughs> hey? We European, uh, you need to make a law or whatever that we should be allowed to have every game. Yeah. Well, and, uh, my um, licensing like team, they work directly with publishers and we have a contract directly with the publishers and the content owner. She will be, he will be very happy of that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. And so we, we include new games every month. You know, the catalog is growing. Uh, actually, we over, you know, 100 publishers already signed. It's more than 650 games already signed and, and we are growing every month and this is at no cost for the, 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 the subscribers. It gets new games all the time. Can you include Super Mario? All these Nintendo, you're talking with these guys over there? Do you go uh, to yeah, Japan? Yeah, and... uh, talking with them, but Nintendo is a very specific area. Uh, they should be uh, happy with this. Yeah. They should say, okay, take it. 
Yeah, we, I cannot say all the discussion we have, yeah? But we are yeah. talking with everyone, yeah? Cool. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want your card or something. Yeah, yeah I'll I have give you it. right here. Yeah. Let me give you my card. It's going here, okay. so it's live. But I will uh, publish separately also. If you want, you send me a little email with a description what I should put on, on your video. Hi. So please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Julie from uh, Miraxess. We are a French startup and uh, we are here to revolutionize the PC industry. Basically, what we want to do at Miraxess is uh, make sure that you never have to buy another computer in your life by transforming your smartphone into a laptop. Do you actually do this every day? Yeah, I do it. I'm a, I myself, I'm a marketing uh, manager, but I'm also a designer. And I use my Mirabox to uh, design my products. I use it with a VM machine so that I have my Windows application. But whenever I post it online on social media, I can just use my phone application. Like you that. use Shadow? Yeah, I use Shadow, actually. So That's basically, you have thing. a huge yeah. uh, NVIDIA GPU with a huge yeah. Intel remotely, and you just use the Shadow app. Yeah, basically. Oops. And with that, you can run all your Photoshop and everything yeah. you need? Yeah, exactly the same as if I was on a traditional computer, let's say. But if I ever need more power or anything, I just have to change my phone. I don't have to change anything else. All right. So, uh, this is just this is not just for show. It's not no. just for the trade show. No. Everybody at the company does that? Yes, we do. Actually, if you go on our website, you can see every design we've made and every uh, components that we've created with our website uh, that is reflected. So, I, what, what's happening here is that you have the integrated yeah, Type-C cable. cable. Exactly. And it just goes to your... What phone do you use? I'm uh, on the S21, but you can basically use any Type-C uh, 3.0 uh, mobiles that are, are like middle to high end. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, this is basically the lap dock, the ultimate lap dock. Yeah, it is. Are you the, the leader for this market? Yes, we are currently because we have a, a few competitors, but we are trying to create products that last in time and are the most sustainable possible. We are not here to try to sell you well, one more lap dock every year. The goal for us is really that you buy this one and then we change the parts that needs to be changed, like the battery last five to ten years whenever you need to change it we will change it for you so you're good to have this for at least five years at whatever least, and change yeah. your phone every couple years if you want if you want if you want and then you have a whole new laptop. computer basically yeah, yeah. And the, How's the performance it's really for your good, productivity? For my productivity, it's really good. I have like some lags uh, whenever I'm uh, using Shadow if my uh, connection drops. But uh, you can also use other kinds of VM machine like Parsec yes. or just uh, mobile applications. All right. Uh, how's the keyboard quality? It's quite good. I really love it. The only thing I would say is that it's a bit dirty because I, uh, I uh, drink a lot of coffee. So I often have my uh, sticky fingers, but it's a really good keyboard. And can you introduce your friend here? Yeah, my friend is actually my CEO. He's Hi a, there. Yannis Hunter, the creator of Miraxis. Nice to meet you. So how is it going? Great. It's great to see you, by the way. Nice to person. see you. Uh, this is um, like your corner over here you can show. Let's go. Let's yeah, walk let's right go. here. This is the ultimate mobile world congress machine, I think, right? <laughs> Thank like you. The, you want to use the mobile. Yeah, for exactly. everything. Yeah, so we bet that in 10 years we won't have PCs anymore because we are going to kill the PC industry as it is today and replace it with mobile only. So mobile only is consider your smartphone as the only computer you need. And based on that vision... Let me see here. So what's happening on the, on the slide? So I have connected my personal smartphone to our new product, the Mirror Dock which is a docking station for Samsung DeX. And uh, I'm able to, to browse, to work, to show you this presentation. And like I said, we believe in mobile only. You have your smartphone as the only computer you need. And with that, you can push digital sobriety. So uh, it's good for the planet. It's so good. basically, the von der Leyen and the EU should make it mandatory. Right? They should. They should, definitely should. because. With our first product, the Mirrorbook, you can transform your smartphone into a full-fledged laptop. And if you do so, you can lower your carbon footprint by, by 56%. Why? Because the Mirrorbook is what we call a lap dock. And the lap dock is a, 
a laptop, but a passive laptop. There's no CPU, RAM, or storage, no heavy components. Your smartphone is the central unit. And by transforming your smartphone into a laptop, you can lower your carbon footprint by 56% because you have less components. That's easy, and that's rational economically and ecologically. Nice. Uh, you say first version, but uh, I've seen you uh, do this for a while, right? Like a couple, two, three, four years. So uh, does, does that mean there's been revisions and uh, improvements in the product, or is version? What do you mean? Mm. What's the, how would you define there it? There have been some improvement on the supply chain. We have improved the quality, and uh, the, the the most difficult part in a startup is raising funds. You know, especially in hardware. Uh, being a hardware company it takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of effort, of people, of resources. And uh, we kind of struggled, as every hardware startup does, uh, to find uh, those resources. But now it's done, we just raised 2.5 million, and we are ready to show the world what Mobile, mobile World Congress is, and Mobile Only Vision is, replacing the laptop. And so, here, what you have going on is the mirror book here, in yep. the corner. And what's this little attachment? So this little attachment is called um, the phone side. It's an accessory that I can clip and clip on the side of the of the of the laptop of the mirror book. And then you have the 50 centimeters cable made for that in order to be comfortable. I mean, you can take it and it won't move. So yeah, it's stable. It, it is stable, yeah. And we have other accessories. Let me show you. And pretty much it's been like four or five years that every Samsung high-end S series and Note series and all the Huawei since the Mate 8, right. they're all compatible. Samsung high-end smartphones are compatible and Miraxis is partnered with Samsung Electronics and uh, Huawei is uh, compatible as well. Motorola has just released something called Ready4. They are compatible. There's the brand CrossCall, which is French as well, and other coming up. Hopefully, Apple next year they will adopt uh, USB Type C. Type C, right? They will, of course, they will, yeah. right? You have, uh, I'm joking. Uh, but they, <laughs> yeah, so they're going to be supported. Maybe, do you want to do a mirror book with a wireless support also in a switch? Or that's. This is uh, one of our ideas, yes. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, two years uh, before we do that. Uh, before that, uh, we have created the mirror dock, the, the ultimate docking station with everything you need to use DEX. And um, and possibly after we'll make a tablet version. We have our, our roadmap for that. But uh, believe me, uh, our purpose is to create experiences, new experiences for DEX for mobile only. What is this dock that we see here? The mirror dock. The mirror dock is the ultimate docking station to be productive with your smartphone. So let's say you connect it to your TV, connect your smartphone with uh, with DEX or equivalent. And then um, your smartphone turned into a desktop PC. And you can play with it. You can watch your uh, Netflix series or your YouTube videos. Uh, let's say uh, we, we open the Sharbox uh, video. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, basically, it, it is meant for entertainment. But also, uh, let's say you are a company and you want to start being mobile only for all the reasons that I explained, sustainability, cost, security. Well, you have this on your desk, and it's a, a fixed PC that uh, you can use for uh, your employees. When the mirror book is for, on, uh, for mobility, the mirror dock is for desktop use. So this one has a bunch of ports here. Yep. What, what's going on? So we have four USB-A, um, 2.2 uh, two, uh, two, uh, two USB-A uh, 3.0. You have... Uh, uh, Ethernet uh, connector with up to one gig of, uh, of speed. You have SD card readers, uh, HDMI out, USB Type C to connect a second source. Let's say you have your smartphone on the front. Well, on the back you can have, I don't know, a Nintendo Switch or another smartphone or a tablet or a PC. And you have a button on the top that you can uh, press and switch the the source. Switch the source. Yeah, with one screen. So there's uh, dual inputs. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Um, is there any chance that you could even do a mirror book with a bunch of extra ports 
like uh, dual output now. Like uh, the, the stuff, like when I connect the S21, S22, all these phones, uh, they only support one external display, right? When you connect yeah, the Type C, there's do. no like dual yet. Yeah, unfortunately, Dex doesn't support uh, extended display. So you can have only one display. However, what we do at Murexus, because at Murexus, we are the first ambassador for our products, but also Samsung's products with, uh, with Dex. Um, show you. We use and we work with MirrorBook and MirrorDoc uh, at the office. So what I do personally is I open my big uh, Fold smartphone and I can move the, the mouse to the phone screen and use it that way. So I can type my message here, then switch the, the, the mouse to the, the bigger screen and work. I can put my music here with my finger tap here. So basically, I have a dual screen. I don't, I don't quite understand. The mouse goes from this display to that display? Yeah, same here. It it's can just, be considered as a second display. It's just out of the display right there? Yep. And that's something that you had to add. It is supported with Dex, but we uh, kind of uh, highlight it because it is embedded in the mobile-only use. Nice. Uh, did you see this mass market? I want to see 8 million people buy this. Uh, what's the price, ultimately, potentially, for like a mass deployment where everybody needs to buy one? Mm, so I would say that if you want to be minimalist in your approach of uh, IT and have one device and be sustainable and really be efficient in your way to, to compute, then this solution is meant for you. You have one computer, one pocket computer, your smartphone, and then you add it, you add multiple accessories like MirrorBook, like MirrorDoc to improve the experience to really um, fit your needs. If you need a, a laptop because you go on the train, you want to watch a series, you want to work on your PowerPoint, then you, you get the, the mirror book. And if you want to work at home or entertain on your bigger screen on your TV, then you get the mirror dock. So both are complementary in, in the way you use your smartphone as a PC. And we believe that in five to 10 years, we won't have PCs anymore because it is logical to have one device. I mean, the smartphone has become the calculator, MP3 player, GPS, credit card recently. So it is obvious that it will become naturally the, the, the PC, the personal computer. Your book is at 499 uh, uh, euros or dollars on our website, and MirrorDoc will be available in March at 139 euros and dollars. All right. Uh you're not planning to do a lower cost mirror book, like an entry level or something? Mm, interesting. So we would like to approach an uh, emergent market with that approach. Um, however, Mirror Access, Mirror Book, Mirror Doc is a high-end brand. So we will continue to make the best product as possible. Uh, so I don't think we can be uh, much lower than, uh, than this. But uh, we definitely want to approach the emergent market. So probably we'll make a second brand more accessible with different products. All right. Uh, what's the, the level of excitement when you sit down with the guys at Huawei or Samsung? <laughs> are they telling you like, yeah, like, you know, because they, they're not, Samsung and Huawei is not selling laptops. <laughs> <laughs> they are not. Well, let me show you what we did in B2B for enterprises. So for instance, uh, we have deployed MirrorBook to uh, the UK police forces, 350 MirrorBook to the West Midlands police. What they do is digital witness statement. They are on the crime scene, they type their report, it is directly sent over the air to uh, their central system, and they do remote work. This has gone the budget from 1.2 million pounds to 70,000 pounds, plus the carbon emission footprint. We have another one with the Irish Garda, so in Ireland, obviously. 400 mirror book deployed, 
to access the backend and do their policing work every day on the road. Uh, recently, we are working with major companies uh, like uh, Thales, uh, who is um, uh, deploying a 100 DEX uh, station, and uh, they are checking if there is some uh, use cases for Mirrorbook. But they've uh, up upgraded their uh, productivity by up to one hour a day. That is huge. We have uh, a pilot running also with uh, EDF, so it's the uh, electricity company in France. Uh, they have, uh, let's say, 430 technicians in operation on the field, and their uh, current fleet is uh, 3,000 euros per user for four years. And we are able, with Samsung and Muraccess, to have a, a budget of 1,100 uh, euros for four years with a Mirrorbook and uh, a smartphone. So that's why I'm saying. Slide, if you can go just before yeah. uh, the one you said, one hour of productivity per day. Yeah. How? Well, let me explain. Uh, before that, uh, at the factory, they used to have uh, different uh, stations, and between each stations, they had uh, their computers, heavy computers, heavy uh, old Windows computers, and they took it from one post to another. And then every time they had to log in, they had to put the, the, the good software, connect to internet, and it was a long process. Now, just, they just have their smartphone in their hands, they go from one station to another, they plug to, to a screen, and that's it, it's plug and play. Oh, that's oh it works and it's great, and they want to just go full gangbusters on this? <laughs> or is there a lot of uh, uh, software steps. that needs to be adapted? Because uh, Android sold 3 billion, 7 billion phones or whatever so far, but all the apps are not necessarily optimized for keyboard, true. mouse, and big display. So they need more apps. That is true. Sometimes, I mean, most of the time, they work on Windows. So it is not the same operating system, uh, different environments, different apps. So there are two solutions. Or they create the same apps on an Android environment, which uh, has been done, for instance, by the, the, the UK police. Or they use solutions like VDI. VDI is the first virtual desktop infrastructure. Basically, you have a PC in the cloud. Let me show you. So I open the Parsec app. I click on the computer, and you wait like three seconds, three, two, one, and you are connected to a Windows PC in the cloud. And you can use it with a, a very uh, acceptable latency. Is that like, on the AWS, or where do you? Uh, this is Parsec. It, it's a different uh, solution. You use your own PC and you put it in the cloud. But you have ah, the same solutions like, like Shadow, VMware, yeah. Citrix for professionals. They all work great. They all work great, depending on your internet connection. Do you do a lot of shadowing yourself? Uh, I used to work on Shadow 100% of the time. Uh, but now I switched to my own PC in the cloud with, uh, with uh, Parsec because I wanted to use my gaming PC uh, unleash its power for something useful <laughs> instead of having uh, another third computers. I don't like uh, having uh, uh, multiple uh, computers. So the Lenovo ThinkPad think guys, they sell a lot of computers and stuff. And they have pretty good keyboard and Mac, some people, like it's pretty nice, the mouse and everything. How is your quality of the keyboard and the mouse, what do you say? For the mirror book, it is a great keyboard. I only have good feedback. Uh, very close to the Mac one, but uh, in 2013, maybe. Um, so, very good experience with the keyboard. The trackpad is good. I mean, I mean, would be decent for, for certain people who are used to uh, uh, the, the Mac uh, trackpad, but it is very usable. It is, it is not perfect. This is the first version, but overall, it is a great product, and we have mainly good feedback. Because when you buy a mirror book, it's for 10 years, it's for a decade. So you need to have, few, like, you need to be so happy with the travel and everything and the, the yeah. quality of the, the whole whole thing. That's what we say. We say mirror book is the last laptop you will ever buy because then you can upgrade it to change the battery if it's dead, change the cable, but that's it. How about the display? Display when can new last display 10, coming 10 years. Out, you easy. let people switch? Pardon? You, you will let people upgrade their displays? 
the display is not upgradable. It can be repaired, of course, but a, a display can last 10 years with no, no problem. Because if you look 10 years in the, ba in the past, the ThinkPad displays look like crap. Uh, <laughs> and, and now you want to be sure that whatever crazy innovation happens in displays five years in the future, maybe you want to swap it in, but that's not compatible potentially. Maybe for a second version. Maybe. Uh, but that's yeah. our intention to be, uh, uh, to, to, to be sustainable and to have our product lasting the, the biggest uh, time ever. Um, so, so you are market leader or not? <laughs> I wouldn't say we are market leader. Uh, we have uh, our competitor, uh, NextDoc. We really appreciate them. We are friends with Emre, so there's no problem with, with that. We, we were even considering collaborating on some projects. So I wouldn't say we are uh, uh, very uh, active competitors. We try to help each other more than uh, crush each other. Each other. Uh, but yeah, he, he's got great products. I think it, it would be a bit different. It's a different approach. What is different, for example, is the... Um, the color touch that we have, this, uh, this special feature. The color touch is a, a cable slot so that you have your, your cable always with you. And this is very practical because you don't want to lose your cable or damage it in your bag. No, you have Hi. Hi. So please introduce yourself. So hi, I'm Radek, the CEO of CoPresence. What we do at CoPresence is photorealistic avatars. So from a simple scan, can be like a phone or anything that has a camera. We will uh, scan your face, so you have to like turn your head left, right, up, down. And then from this, we estimate your head geometry, do the texture correction, per uh, do the texture projection correctly. And what we then see is such an avatar. Here now you can see like- It's real time. It's real time on yes. commodity hardware. So, so if I stand right here, maybe you can from here. From here you can see it side by side. Like yeah. from there. If you maybe, maybe if you come over here. Yeah. Okay. Hello. So you're making a, a photorealistic avatar 3D. Uh, what's the use case? Gaming is one use case, right? So you can be yourself within the game and play with your friends. They actually look like they look. Then all the VR, AR, metaverse applications, which are still currently very like comic style, but we want like a photorealistic version just to have like better conversations within within this environment. And a video conferencing actually, because a video conferencing you also have a lot of um, benefits because you can send the avatar model just one time and then instead of sending all the pixels, we just send the facial expressions, which is much less um, information as you can see, right? Um, such that we like really can reduce the bandwidth requirements, and this means also lower latency and uh, energy consumption. Can I try? Yes, you can try it out here. So it takes 30 seconds, right uh, okay. and then for five minutes for optimization. Okay, five minutes it takes. Ah, so 30 seconds. Uh, okay. Then you need to wait five minutes, but in the future we will reduce it to under one minute. So I can sit there. Yeah, but you you have to cap capture yourself okay. here. Okay, here's the where. line. <laughs> okay. Ah, there it is. So, like slowly turn your head, uh, head right, and then afterwards slowly turn it left. So like really slowly, okay? And just just look straight into your own eyes. Okay, now slowly turn it to the right. To it further. A bit further. Okay, back to the center. And you can back to the center and then to the to the left also like this. And a bit further still. Okay, now now slowly back. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's too much. Uh, what is this five minutes that you need? What is happening in those five um, minutes? So basically optimization, right? It's a machine learning algorithm, machine learning based, computer vision based. So we are coming from the computer vision domain. Uh, and what we do is basically we will estimate your head geometry and it's an optimization process. And this is currently taking about five minutes, but in the future, because we can do many technical tricks to reduce it to under one minute. All right. So, uh, one minute, how about real time? Uh, so, so, basically, optimization, this is something 
which we just to do. This is a one, uh, yeah, one-time process, right? We just need to estimate your model one time, and then everything else from then on uh, works in real time. All right. Let's go right here. Are there games where you can use your own? Uh, yes, so this works, uh, this works actually in a, in a game engine. So it works on the standard rendering pipeline, meaning in every game engine that exists, that's, that's no problem. Uh, such that you can use it in games, as I said, be yourself if in the own game. Also, you can think of like sport games, right? Where like superstars are like modeled by hand or uh, with a, with a yeah, costly setup, right? This is like much cheaper, right? You just need a phone or anything which is equipped with a camera. Nice. Uh, can you click on a button and make yourself look 10, 20 years younger? Theoretically, yes, but we haven't looked into it yet. So as AI stuff. I mean. Yeah, so sure. That's it's, uh, technically there's this is no problem. But uh, the coolest thing is to be yourself in the game. Yes. And maybe uh, you put on VR headsets. Correct. And when you do video chat, you will see the person Correct. not there, not with their headset on. Yes, and correct. you would be in the room with them. Exactly. Uh, That's basically what's possible with the technology. But so this is an awesome demo. How about availability? Can people uh, use this? Are you so, launching? Or? Yes. So we will have a closed beta ready in end of April, which will be closed, and then we'll have an avatar platform, uh, hopefully in May. Depends on uh, the uh, the process of getting into the app store, right? That's, and then everyone can create this avatar at home and export it to many file formats, like all the metaverse file formats and so on. And obviously we have the licensing model for, uh, for companies that want to have a wide level solution. Do you use LiDAR for that? Yes, currently yes. It helps a bit. It helps convergence time. It quality is a bit better, but we, are not, uh, we don't need it necessarily. So it also works just from images quite good. But it takes a bit longer than uh, the five minutes of, of optimization because that helps a bit. How about AI machine learning photogrammetry? Yes, so uh, this is not photogrammetry based, right? Because photogrammetry also you have the, the problem of this uh, uh, alignment of the vertices, right? This has a really geometric or symmetric topology such that we can animate it better, right? So it's a, a parametric model actually, optimized by machine learning. Uh, so this tag has been developed for decades. No, people have been trying to do this. Yeah, how are you different from others? Yeah, we just the, we, we've, just, we've just done it. You actually make it work? Yeah, so we actually make it work. We did everything in house. So the avatar uh, estimation, the tracking, the, the contents, the apps, obviously, right? Uh, we are like all like computer vision PhDs, one machine learning guy, and physician. Yeah. Uh, the lidar stuff. Uh, that's not in any phone, right? No, no phone it's, has it's, it's, in, it's like there's this iPhone X structured light thing, right? Uh, for like what's also used for a face ID, right? Ah, there is that. That's that's not lidar, is it? No, it's it's, it's, it's it's similar. It's it's a depth sensor if you want. Yeah. Like, and you yeah. have access to the whole API for that stuff. Correct, but it's not. It's but as I said, we don't need the depth necessarily. It just helps. It makes the process a bit faster. And quality-wise, it's a bit better, but not. Because then yeah. Maybe but it also works all from standard images. <laughs> Correct. Do you have beauty beauty mode? Sorry, we don't have beauty mode yet. Obviously, this is something we can look into. We are still working, so we are not too satisfied with the eyes right now. So we are working on the eyes at the moment, and then the hair, and make everything perfect. Right? We are quite happy with the skin. What and then what it's can do to improve the eyes? Meaning putting some more work into making it look even more realistic. You just take the information from the actual eyes to make it more real. Yeah, so the thing is, uh, yes, we, uh, we have like the eyes are modeled separately, right? Uh, so uh, these are artificial eyes, basically, but we need to make it look even better. So games are cool, but I think the coolest thing is going to be. You know, like uh, 
be in the room with someone in another absolutely another country yes and like i want to have the thing where you know there was this whole COVID and people doing zoom calls and everything. that's why that was our motivation at the table and feel like i'm at the table with the guys mm -hmm. and somehow you know you put on your vr headset yeah. and my grandparents can be in denmark and boom they are at the table correct you can you don't need even need uh, vr headsets for this you can do it with standard hardware as well right this is what everyone already has at home meaning we know it every time who is looking at whom during the video conference and we can do artificial eye and head movements so all this eye head upper torso coupling right you can simulate it because we have the person in 3d so we keep the facial expressions and if i look at someone within the video conference i could look directly into the camera right if i want to look at if i want to look at you but then all the others would also see that I'm looking at you, meaning if I change uh, my eyes and look at someone else, right? I would uh, I would be artificially turning my head towards this person, and then you would also see that I'm currently looking at someone else, right? Or set non-verbal cues like this, but individually to someone. Obviously, uh, then the the next step would be VR headsets, right? Uh, same technology basically, but VR headset is even is even easier actually because then you have like really map <laughs> conditions, right? So within the headset, ca infrared cameras pointing into your eyes to have your eye tr tracked, right? Uh, it's even easier than uh, doing it for only with an RGB cam. All right. Uh, would, would be nice also. Uh, you know these. Google Home speakers, the Alexa speakers, yeah. and um, I think Microsoft or other people are talking about, you know, like where you can record your voice and make them speak with your voice. But what I want to see also is on the TV, the face moving, the mouse moving, and uh, instead of saying, hey Google, I would say, hey John, yeah. and then boom, you have John answer and his face moving in his yeah. voice. Are you doing that? Uh, currently not looking into it. I mean, we are a startup, right? Currently L11 people, so we are putting everything currently into the spot. Um, but from there, like many applications can uh, arise, right? So, um, beautifying, but you can also think of as live translation, right? Meaning I can talk to someone talking Mandarin in my language, and there would be not a visual avatar, but a voice avatar and then lip synced into this new voice, such that I can speak my language and I've been spoken to in, in, in within my language, right? Just to, uh, yeah. There's one problem, language barriers. is that it would be good to animate people who might not have had a chance to be scanned by your system. Could you potentially just take a bunch of photos? Yes. And just find them in the photos? Yes. I give you my Google Photos account and you go and you make 3D anybody that might not even be alive anymore. Maybe. Yes, you know? correct. I saw we, we also haven't looked into it because currently, but I, I don't see why it would be technically different from what we are doing currently, right? So we just need photos from different perspectives, ideally. That's it. That's it. Just different sides of the face is enough. Correct. Nice. You might not even care about being the same day or the same. It could be any time, even different ages, just as long as you can Correct. approximate I mean, yeah. what it could look so like. So best conditions are like obviously a daylight, maybe in front of a window. That's quite good, right? Uh, we don't have a relighting based technology yet. I mean, we were thinking about it, but haven't, haven't done it yet. Nice. Uh, just a startup. Yes. What's next? How do you how do you bring this to kill Google, Microsoft, and Amazon? Uh, yeah, uh, so kill, they're but like uh, you know, like uh, do something big that sure impresses people. So we do the core technology first, right? And as you said, so the app we we will we build uh, based on this technology will be a video conferencing application, which is much more natural. So the ultimate goal we want to solve is exactly this hybrid work scenario, right? Where some people are sitting at one place of the world, another group sitting at another place of the world, and then three may be sitting alone. How do you solve this optimally, right? This is something we are looking into it, and we still believe that avatars in realistic form are exactly the tool we need to achieve this.
do you want to partner with a bunch of companies? Is that what you're doing? You're talking with people that are doing stuff and integrating your tech with them? Yeah, exactly. So we are integrating it, uh, our technology into gaming companies. Also, we are talking about like uh, yeah, video conferencing companies, right? Cool. Okay. That's what we do. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. So, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Hiba Sheikh from Air Console. So, what is the Air Console? So, basically, we're a gaming application for TVs and cars. We have an app on the TV, and then we have an app on the phone. And you can simply, using our Connect code, be connected um, to it in seconds. And you have a catalog of over 180 casual local multiplayer games that you can play from. Over 100 games included with a subscription? Or? Yes, exactly. So um, we have a monthly and yearly subscription. Um, and you have 11 games that are for free. And then if you get the subscription, you would be able to play all of those games. 11 for free? Yes, exactly. So that means you can uh, try it? Yeah, you can try it, exactly. Um, the unique thing about our solution is that you're, you're actually using the smartphone as the controller. Um, and so it's very easily accessible. It's really a plug-and-play solution. You can just, on the, on the TV, you can go on the Google Play Store and you can instantly download it and play within seconds. And Every Android TV is supported. Yes, exactly. Every Android TV is supported. And what's really cool is that now we're also coming into cars. So we recently signed a partnership with BMW. Uh, and later this year, we're going to be launching in BMW cars as their uh, select gaming solution as well. So, when people are not driving, yeah. they stop by the side of the road, maybe while they're charging the Exactly, EV. that's the idea. So, while you're charging, um, maybe while you're waiting to pick up your kids from football practice or, um, you know, currently we're providing a stationary experience, but there's so many things we can do in the future uh, with autonomous driving as the cars get more... Um, as they advance in technology, then we're going to advance with the way we integrate our product into those cars as well. All right. Uh, can you show off how it works? Yeah, sure. Uh, and this is actually, so currently it's based on the number of titles. Yes, I'm just going to have to switching. Okay. So this is one of our games, actually, that we already have open. Um, and it's on the smart TV right now? Yes, this is on the smart TV. So if you see, you can, um, here you can race. This is one of our racing games. So then you can choose uh, which track you want. So what's really cool is it really is a multiplayer solution. So um, for some of the games, you can even connect up to 16 smartphones at the same time. So for this one, I think you can have around four people playing at the same time. And they're just on the Wi-Fi at home? That's it? Uh, yeah, you could be on Wi-Fi. Um, for the TV screen, you would need Wi-Fi. On the phone, you can be on Wi-Fi, or you can even use your uh, connection, your 4G, 5G. How's the lag? When you click, um, is it pretty yeah. so quick? Actually, we're, we're using WebRTC um, to connect the two devices. And so here, we're, we can see that the lag is um, it's barely there. We've been working on improving our latency for years and years. So our latency goes as low as 20 to 30 uh, milliseconds. Because since we have, like for example, racing games as well, you don't want to feel that when you click, then you have to wait, you see? So it's pretty instant. I'm clicking, uh, and then we're having the reaction at the same time at the output device. Is it potentially possible to use a Bluetooth remote control, like a game console yeah, remote? So, um, what's special about our, um, our service is that it's accessible and you don't actually have to buy any other hardware than what you already own. So this is specific to our product and you can only play it with the smartphone control because, um, for example, we have different control schemes for every single game as well. It's not just a standard control scheme like you would have on like a PlayStation or Xbox, you just have the controller. Here for every game, you can see as well, this is our catalog. Um, you have all different types of games. You have a cooking game here that's one of our more um, famous games. Um, here you have a drawing game. And we really um, pride ourselves in the fact that it's really multi-generational. So you could be playing with your friends, family, your grandparents, your parents at the same time. But the input device is always the smartphone. Because, for example, if we sometimes think if you have already a game controller, then you probably also have a console that comes with the game controller. But, uh, 
Yeah. All right. Uh, but couldn't it, in theory, the TV can connect Bluetooth? That wouldn't be good enough to control some games with a um, controller? The thing is, we, for each of our games, we're working with different development studios, and they make these specific control schemes. So um, if we're controlling any other device, then that changes our product. Then we have to make controllers for uh, those games. We have to make specific control schemes for that different device as well. All right. Uh, is there any chance you could have AAA games, like super powerful uh -huh. games that need require yeah, huge yeah, GPUs yeah. in the cloud? Um, so we are really focusing on casual gaming because we really want to be accessible to everyone. With AAA games, not everyone can play it because it's sometimes they're pretty hard to understand and to learn as well. And with casual gaming, you can really play with everyone. For example, I can play with my parents and in a few seconds they'll be able to understand it and play it as well. So. We're definitely sticking to the casual gaming because that's where we see that the market needs something like this. For AAA gaming, the market is already pretty saturated with all the different consoles and the even the AAA cloud gaming. You know, there's so many of them that exist. And we firmly believe if you're a AAA gamer, you're going to stick to your console because you want the best that's in the market for your gaming experience. And so that's why we focus on casual gaming. Sometimes the smartphones have a selfie camera and yes. some people, they like to play these dancing games and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything of that? Uh, no, we don't currently have anything like that. Potentially. But you never know, yes, in you the future. Know. Yeah, yeah. What's the subscription cost? Um, so it, it depends where you are in the world. Um, it, it is varying according to um, country, but the monthly would range from around $5 to $8. And the yearly would range from $12 um, dollars to 24 So it's pretty reasonable. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, right. uh, where is this? Let me give you my card. <laughs> right here. Uh, this, this, you have the card here, you see? Yeah. Uh, so, it's live on the YouTube, oh. but we will also put it later as a separate video. Okay. If you want, you can send me a, a description that should be for your video. We'll okay. use it. Okay. But, uh, otherwise, we'll just put, we'll find a new website and put uh -huh. some stuff. Okay. But right okay. now, it's live. Ah, it's on live YouTube. where? On YouTube? Yeah, on, the, on, on my YouTube channel. channel. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so cool. much. Uh, so, hi. So, please introduce yourself. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm Valentine Levy. I'm the CMO of uh, the company TinyMDM. Uh, so, what does the TinyMDM do? Um, it's an um, Android mobile device management solution. Uh, we are working with uh, companies worldwide and helping them to remotely manage and configure all their devices uh, through our dashboard. Is this a dashboard? Uh, this is a dashboard here. Yeah. So, this is a dashboard here. Uh, so you can view all... I'm so sorry. I need to get close to the dashboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can see all the devices that the company can manage and then directly from here you can see for example all the apps that are allowed or not and then you can remotely push the installation yeah, so then you can sorry. remotely push the application, their updates, you can manage passwords, you can manage the geolocation of the devices, uh, enforce um, internet filtering, uh, remotely lock the device, change the passwords, uh, reset the device to factory settings, etc. So it really allows companies to boost productivity of their team and enhance the security of the devices. Uh, how do you get deep root access to the Android device? You need a special Android version yeah, that you yeah. customize yeah, exactly. that goes on every device? No, it's it's because we are uh, Android uh, EMM partner and we are approved by Google Enterprise to manage all Android devices. So we are a device owner of the device. So uh, there's a way to control devices like that. And enterprises, what else are they doing right now in the world to control all the devices? Our customers? Uh, like in general, to understand what does the enterprise do when they give an Android phone to all the employees? 
Oh, we have many different use cases. Uh, some some customers are using uh, the devices to scan uh, items uh, in uh, in the retail, but we also have customer in education, and they provide the devices to children in classroom, and they need to manage the access. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have many use cases. Uh, do you already have a lot of uh, customers, or is this a new? Are you like a new? New startup? It's a, it's a new startup because we created Tiny MGM uh, three years ago, but we manage around 200,000 devices on the five continents. So it's a, it's a huge success. All right, 200,000, that sounds like a lot. Yeah. So you already have big companies working with you. Yeah, we don't have any minimum, so our smallest fleet is one license, and our biggest customer have uh, 30,000 licenses with, uh, and with Tiny MGM. Do you have competitors? Oh yeah, we have competitors. Who are they? Uh, or you, maybe you don't have to say, but is it like big companies or small also? Or? Well, MGM solutions are... There is many competitors, but they are very uh, complex with uh, many, many, many features, and the price is almost uh, is, is also expensive. So Tiny MGM is really simple to use and really affordable, and we are Android dedicated, so that's that's different than what our competitors are doing. So you're doing something that's better. That's easier to use, but more advanced at the same time. No, it's not. It's not more advanced. It's uh, it's like basic features. Um, Android dedicated, easiest to use, and more affordable. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, there you can see me. So I'll be uh, right back with the live stream. Uh, do you have my card? Do you have the business card? Uh, Let me give you. I see. Uh, yeah. I wonder if anybody can let me know how's the quality, drop frames, the sound. Hopefully, it's good. My Yolo Box Pro is saying some kind of thing that I had to unbind and rebind my account. I'm not sure if that's required. Okay, so I think I'm gonna stop the live stream and restart a little bit later. So please check back in like a, an hour or so for part two of day one of Mobile World Congress. Big business. Cool products launched. I need to get two more devices, more hardware. I'll be filming that. Let me know in the comments what you've read on the internet. Let me turn like this. Uh, let me know. Did you read some cool news? Something happening at the Mobile World Congress? Uh, some new crazy device? Let me know in the comments. I'll be doing live stream about it today. Day after day tomorrow, later.